Welcome back guys. So today we're going to be making a garlic and honey ferment. And so I was kind of thinking about some of our other videos where we go out and we collect these wild medicinal plants and then we kind of show you like a home remedy with them. But I was thinking for you guys that maybe don't have access to some of those environments to be able to gather some of your wild medicinals, this is a great option that you can go to your local farm store, maybe your local Amish food store. Heck, even Kroger's got this stuff. But you could go out, buy this stuff, and make your own remedy at home that's going to be a lot of benefits to it. So honey by itself is like an anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, it's good for digestion. Of course, everybody knows you'll take that honey and you'll drink it in your tea to help soothe your throat. And this stuff too, like let's say you got like a cut or a laceration on it, you could actually use that honey to help prevent the infection and help seal and close that wound, almost like a second skin. And of course you got your garlic, your garlic's got all kinds of benefits as well. So it's gonna help and aid with digestion when you put these two together, as far as your probiotics goes. But your garlic is gonna help lower your blood pressure. It's gonna help reduce your chances of having like a stroke or high cholesterol. Putting these guys together too is real good for women. It's gonna help increase your bone density and your bone strength. It's gonna help regulate your blood sugar. And overall, just taking this stuff is gonna increase your energy levels and just make you feel like you got more energy and just feel better all around. So with the antioxidant properties you have here, this is really good to help prevent from getting a cold, or if you already have a cold, it's gonna help you recover over that cold just a little bit faster. So what we're gonna do here is take a look at our honey. So our honey, it has to be a unpasteurized natural honey. And you gotta make sure too, a lot of times people will send their honey through a uh, ultra filtration system, and that's gonna take all the pollens and all the good things in this honey, it's gonna remove them. So when you look at your honey, if it looks crystal clear, it's probably not the stuff you're looking for. You actually want your, your honey to look a little bit foggy. And then when you look at it, you can actually see a little bit of pollen in there. And that pollen's good for you. So if you take a little bit of honey every day, especially if you could get it from like a local beekeeper, so that pollen that's in that honey is actually gonna help boost your immune system, but it's gonna help your anti-allergen properties as you consume it a little bit every day. So make sure you get a raw, unpasteurized honey, preferably local if possible. Now, as far as your garlic goes, you wanna make sure you're not using your garlic clove that's way back in the corner of the cabinet that's been sitting there for six months, and it's already kinda popcorn fart dry, as you might say. That kind of honey there, that's gonna be good for like your stew or your soup or something like that. This kind of concoction here, you're really gonna want garlic that has a lot of life to it and a lot of juice in the middle. And if possible, organic is the way to go. So this is a really simple, really easy process. I'm gonna show you guys how to do it. So I'm gonna take you through the step-by-step -step process on how to make this garlic and honey ferment. And it's really easy to do, it's kind of fun. And I think once you guys get done with it, you'll actually really enjoy it. So one of the things that we're using here is a fermentation lid or like a burper. And this is through Good and Plenty. And you guys can buy this on Amazon. I'll leave that link down below if you guys are interested in that. But basically it's gonna come with a lid and this lid has a gasket in it and it has a little O-ring here. But you're gonna take your burper, you're gonna put this in there, you're gonna fill it up with water a little bit, put that onto your mason jar. So as this is fermenting, it's gonna create some gas. As those gases come up, it's gonna burp the air out, but it's not gonna let any more air back into it. So that's a really cool option for you. On the other hand, if you don't wanna spend the money on it, you could take just a normal mason jar, put your lid on it, and every once in a while just loosen that lid up and it's gonna let that gas uh, escape there, tighten that lid back down, and probably open it up maybe every two days, let that gas expel. All right, to start off with, we're gonna be taking all the husk off our garlic. So that process is real easy, you guys know how to do that. Keep in mind, like I said, if you have any of that garlic that's dried out, so this is a new clove, new purchase clove, but this one looks like it might actually be too dry. So if it's a real dry, hard piece, take that out of there. We don't want to include that. So this is what I was talking about right here. So our garlic here, it looks real nice, healthy, juicy, exactly what you're looking for, organic. This one here came out of the same uh, cluster of the cloves here. This you do not want to add that. If it's dried out or nasty looking like this one, toss that out, don't use it. So we got our garlic cleaned up here. Now there's a few different ways we could approach that. So you could take that whole clove and toss it in your jar, but it's gonna take a long time to ferment. 
probably looking at two months, most likely a little bit longer. Another thing you could do is take a fork and puncture little holes in it and toss it in there. And that's gonna help redu or, uh, release some of them juices out of the garlic, but it's still gonna take a long time. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna crush it a little bit. And if it doesn't crush real well, we're actually gonna cut it up a little bit. And that's gonna drastically reduce the amount of time it takes to ferment, which means you guys get to consume it even faster. So I'm gonna give it a little crush and cut it up a little bit. This one's a, a giant clove right here. That one definitely has to be cut. All right, so we got our garlic all smashed up, diced it up a little bit, chopped it up a little finer. So that's kind of what we're looking for. Now, as far as our honey goes, you wanna put enough honey on this to make sure that you cover all the garlic on there. Now, another thing you could do is you could have put that garlic into this container but the wide mouth is a lot nicer, so that way you could actually stick a spoon in here and you could actually take out big chunks of that garlic when you want to eat it. That spoon would be a little harder to get in here. All right, so we added our honey to our garlic. Now we're gonna to have to mix it up a little bit. I'm gonna use my knife here just because I got it, but otherwise, if you use like your standard mason lid, you could just tip that jar upside down, let it all run to the lid, flip it over, do that a couple times, and make sure that all your garlic in there's got a nice layer of honey on it. You wanna make sure you ain't got much air on there, like sitting on the garlic cloves or trapped in the bottom, so just give it a good mix. We're not trying to aerate it or nothing. We don't want a ton of bubbles in there, but it does have to be mixed up well. So we're ready to put our little burper contraption together. So that's pretty easy. Just push it right in the hole. It's already got the built-in gasket. No big deal. And put the lid on. So one other thing we got to do is we got to put water in here. So I'll have to run up to the house and grab some water. But when you put your water in there, if possible, try to use like filtered water or bottled water. It's just a little bit cleaner. That's what I prefer to use. And so as far as storage goes, so anytime you're fermenting something, you don't want it to get too cold. Otherwise, it's going to slow down or stop your fermentation process. So this is kind of like a room temperature kind of thing. And you don't really want direct sunlight. So you could put it on your kitchen counter. And that way it helps you remember to make sure you take it also. But you don't want sun just beaming right into it. Kind of tuck it away in the corner a little bit. And that should work out for you just fine. So keep in mind... We crushed up our garlic. So we're looking at about four weeks of fermenting and it should be about good to go. So when you actually go to eat it, you'll take a little bit of honey, a little bit of garlic together with a spoon and go ahead and eat it. But now if you eat that garlic and it's just like, it lights off in your mouth, has that real peppery hot kind of taste to it, it means that your fermentation process hasn't gone long enough. So you could try this after let's say two weeks, you could start trying it and see how you like it. But the longer you wait, probably that four or five, six week period is probably gonna have better results with it. And so also as this is fermenting here, it's gonna help build up those good probiotics and that's what's really gonna aid in that digestion process. To go along with your fermentation process that's happening inside, the juices and, and liquid that's inside of that garlic, it's gonna start coming out of that garlic. So as your honey's real thick right now and it doesn't move much, as it becomes more liquid extracted from your garlic, that honey's gonna get watered down and it's gonna flow faster and easier. So that's a, something that you could see that's part of the process that's normal. Don't be alarmed by that. So right now we got the flu season coming up. There's some cold bugs going on. It's really the time of the year that like, you should already have this made. If not, get it done and start taking it right away. And so as far as your dosages go, you're looking at like one or two spoonfuls of it. You could take it in the morning or before bedtime but it's really something that you're gonna to wanna to take every single day. So if you take it one day and then don't take it for two, three, four weeks, you're not gonna get the benefits out of this stuff. You really need to take it at least every day, maybe every other day at the most, but it's something you wanna have a pretty consistent regimen with. Well, I appreciate you guys watching this. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. I highly recommend this stuff here. I think you'll enjoy it. We'll catch you next time.